this call. They called down for Jesus and said, They allowed them to take it. Then they brought the call to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat upon it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for Holy Scripture. First reading is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The servants, humiliation and vindication. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. He who will contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is 31. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery. My bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. 
I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please stand to hear the good news. The Holy Gospel is from the 14th and 15th chapters of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And we will focus this week on different aspects. And I ask you to devote time for these chapters, the 14th and 15th chapters of Mark. I'll just read a fraction of that for you today. But focus on the plot to kill Jesus, which begins chapter 14. Then the anointing of Jesus at Bethany. And then Judas agreeing to betray Jesus. Jesus. Then Jesus holds a Passover with the disciples, especially this Thursday with our first communicants with the institution of the Lord's Supper, we will celebrate and be with Christ. Then on Good Friday, we will focus more on Peter's denial, Jesus praying in Gethsemane, the betrayal and arrest of Jesus, Jesus being accused and sentenced in front of the council, Jesus before Pilate. Pilate hands Jesus over to be crucified. Soldiers mock Jesus. They crucify him. Then the part that I'll read for you today, the death of Jesus. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out, with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to Jesus to drink, saying, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son, the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. The verse of scripture which continues to be ever before me this week is the one that refers to Hosanna to the son of David. 
that Jesus is a descendant of David. So if you mark 2 Samuel chapter 7, check that out. 2 Samuel chapter 7. And ask yourself, what was different between the first king, King Saul, and the second, King David? We heard last week in Psalm 51 that David was a sinner. He was not perfect. So what is different about David and his sin and Saul in relations to God? In 2 Samuel chapter 7, God promises an eternal kingdom to David and his descendants. We have in our gospel, in the 11th chapter of Mark, that Jesus enters in as a descendant of David, bringing Hosanna, bringing salvation, bringing life eternal, an eternal kingdom to the household of David and God's people that are part of the household. But it's linked to David, not Saul. What did Saul do to not be included? The disobedience of Saul should terrify us because the Lord can decide the same for us. And we would be outside of that eternal kingdom. It only takes a word from the Lord. So when we shout Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna, Jesus Christ, save us. We're desperate. Many times it's as if, well, we've done this before. We know what this is about and we're comfortable. And we feel secure. We're going to talk this week about Jesus as a king. And that's our focus, especially today. But we're also going to talk about Jesus as servant, one who gives of himself. And then Jesus as victim, murdered. So today, Christ the King enters in. What kind of king is he? He's the kind of king that can decide one kingdom will last, another kingdom will fall. One people will prosper and another people will not. What kind of king is Jesus Christ? We like to think that Jesus includes us, welcomes us, invites us, enters in, not just to Jerusalem, but enters into our heart, mind, and soul, to our families and our friends. But what kind of king do we accept in Jesus? <clears throat> what kind of king are we willing to serve. Last night, I learned a lot <clears throat> at our Beaver County Youth Gathering right here at Grace. And to help confuse you, I posted part of it live on Facebook. But I thank Cheryl and Linda and the Speck family for participating and helping to lead. The idea was born of two friends, two pastors in the area. You know Pastor Deborah Blenerick, she and her husband, Tim. They're friends with the youth pastors at Northway. And so Pastor Todd Smith and a couple other pastors, uh, pastor at the Methodist Church in town, 
pastor at Salvation Army in town. It's about six churches just in Rochester that came together last night, but about a dozen represented throughout Beaver County. And it's a weird group of people that love each other. Knowing our differences, there's just nothing but the love of God in Christ Jesus. That Christ is the king, the goal, the reason, our only inspiration. It came through loud and clear. And, and Cheryl and Brianna made sure everything was sprayed afterwards because there was a group of kids here. They sprayed to disinfect, to reassure everybody that we do take seriously concerns. But you can imagine a kingdom that will not last is a kingdom that is so divided, so divisive, that your ideas, your interpretations of the politics, your interpretations of a crisis has to be God and the one and only interpretation. Christ Jesus walking into that room, he better have the right ideas, better have the right policy, or else we'll crucify him. So what kind of king do you worship and praise and sing hosannas to? The one who only reflects your ideas of what is right and what is wrong? Your idea of how to handle a crisis? Your idea and interpretation of a situation? Like Flint, we set our face in the midst of the adversity because they're not attacking us. Someone who is attacking you is actually attacking Christ. For what purpose? To be the king. That's why when you fight that person and that person fights that person, the only reason you're doing that is to celebrate the fact that you are the king. And you've entered into Jerusalem to announce your reign. That's what we're doing. Instead, last night what I found is that there's a people serving Christ and they're different. Weirdly different. Different denominations. And yet Christ is the sovereign one. The only king. At one point, it was just the name of Jesus expressed. Pastor Todd just said the name Jesus. Salvation comes to us in the name of Jesus. And he quoted that Philippians text from the second chapter. Every knee will bend, will bow down in the presence of this king who is Jesus. Every tongue will confess, not their ideology, not their smarts and intellect and superior knowledge. They will confess Jesus as the king. Jesus as the Lord. That's what will endure. There was something in King David's witness that was so genuine and true in a relationship with God, that it could not be broken. God promised it would never be broken. Are we saying Christ is that kind of king who enters in to my personal arena where I think I'm the boss and calling the shots? He enters into my life, into my relationships and thoughts and says, you serve me. And I say, Hosanna, Hosanna, save me, Lord, save us, Lord, for you're the only one who can enter into life and bring this eternal kingdom. You're the only one who can save us. You're the only one who truly matters. The only one who will have every knee and every voice confessing and worshiping and bowing down. Everything else will come and go. Everything else is fleeting 
and vain. But yet think, when someone treats you like a dog and runs from you because they're afraid of what you look like or who you are, they avoid you just because of this division, like Psalm 31. What does that do to a people who are to be united, celebrating Hosanna to the King of David? What does that do to us as we make our divisions and have our little battles and declare a victory in our own names for our own selves to be right? Is it a standing together, like sacred scripture says? A standing together as one. If it's not, my friends, it will not last. The temple curtain was torn the death of Jesus. The day was changed for everyone at the death of Jesus. What kind of king is he? The kind of king who brings life eternal, life forever, who affects everyone. So I put my opinions in their place to serve you, to serve one another. As we shout together, save us, Lord. Hosanna. I like to take trips in books and things. I went to the Pyrenees recently. Have you been there? The mountain range between France and Spain. It's beautiful this time of year, especially. Then I went a little further south to Tanzania. But I haven't really ever been to Tanzania. But last night, Pastor Tim, he gave witness that he had lived among the people who made these. They make these palms for their economy. Then the people like us, we buy them and give them money so that they can live a little better. So we did. And I'd like each of you to have one. Maybe Alexis could share. Is there somebody else could help Alexis pass these out? I'd like everyone to have one. Don't forget the choir. They've been bad, but they still get one. I mean, they've been good. You already have yours? Praise the Lord. So I was talking like I had been to Tanzania, but the Lord, who is the king, he decided to send someone to our gathering last night who lived among the Tanzanian people. Isn't that beautiful? We don't have all the answers, but together the Lord will provide a witness that will bring God glory forever and ever. And so if I denounce or if I reject the witness you might bring forth, what a detriment to the body of Christ. What a shame. That kind of witness of division will not last. So I celebrate with brothers and sisters who might not even speak English, who fashion a cross for us to hold and then to share with someone else. Share it with someone else, especially someone who is different from you. In whatever way you translate that. Share this with someone else and say, I love you. And hopefully it'll be a shock. It'll be an awakening. It'll be an opening in which to celebrate what kind of king Jesus is who enters in to Jerusalem, to our lives today, but forever until every knee will bend, every tongue will confess that Jesus is this king who brings salvation. Amen.
Shall we stand together and profess our faith with the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. Let us stand together and pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. The body of Christ is given for you. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen the body and blood of our lord and savior jesus christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace let us pray god of steadfast love at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world send us in the power of your holy spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in jesus christ our savior and lord amen you are what god made you to be created in christ jesus for good works chosen as holy and beloved free to serve our neighbor God bless us, that we may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share this good news.